parenting is parenting. Regardless, Whether, of, any regardless of any environment. Okay. It's for you, the parent, you taking your responsibility very serious. We as parents should lead by example, mm. teach them our values and, um, you know, because while we raise them in diaspora, we are in another man's land. Mm. Their kids are not, they're not lost. To a large extent, uh, I would say that is in the area of um, culture. That's where we diverse a little bit. Right. And then that's one thing we have to keep an eye on from time to time. You know, there is no one way of parenting. And your way of parenting is not so far to my parenting. Mm. It all depends on the grace of God mm. and leading us to speak when and what we're supposed to speak to the children mm. and how to guide them. My number one on the line thing about parenting is that you have to be available for them. Yeah. Yeah. Even back home, our parents were available for us. Our responsibility, I mean, even in this land, is to raise those kids. If we are successful at every other and we we'll fail in that regard, we are right. a total failure, actually. Well, parenting is a very, very uh, interesting topic. Uh, one that is very dear to my heart because I'm a father of two. Right. Uh, I know we live in a different climate here in the U.S. Uh, compared to where we're coming from. I believe this is one topic everyone at home will be very, very interesting. And in, um, given that um, raising uh, children here um, is a, while it is very, very, um, I, I don't want to. I don't want to say difficult. It's a little bit challenging compared to where we're where we're coming from. So I, I truly believe that um, uh, by the end of this uh, session today, we would have been able to pick one or two ideas about what we can do to better uh, raise our kids in this uh, climb. Yeah, uh, for me, uh, parenting is very dear to my heart. Like you said. Uh, is an area of our life that uh, I've shown a lot of interest in the past with people, uh, the people I've worked with, anytime we have discussion. So, and the issue of parenting comes in, uh, I'm a kind of them that always jump at it and try as much as possible to see how we can come together right. and be able to raise a very good Nigeria, uh, a very good future for Nigeria community in the United States of America. Yeah, for me, I'm a mother of three, so um, I honestly don't know the difference <laughs> between raising a child, you know, children in diaspora or raising them back home because I had all my kids here. Mm. However, based on how I was raised, because I was raised in Nigeria, mm. I see a lot of difference and uh, I'll be very, I am very interested in this topic and I look forward to seeing what we'll, we have in common, what we have, you know, witnessed with our children, you know, because obviously you all have children, not yet, but um, it's on the way, so right, yeah. pay attention. Um, so what do you guys think? Um, I think raising kids back um, in Nigeria is much more easier um, than raising kids here in, in America. Um, do you think there's much difference in the aspect of raising your kids back at home and compared to here in America? Uh, for me, right. parenting is parenting. Regardless, Whether, of, any regardless of any environment. Okay. It's for you, the parent, you taking your responsibility very serious. Hmm. God has placed these children in your life for you to guide, right. to raise, in a proper way. As a parent, your job is to care for them, right. is to guide them throughout their life, mm. their entire life. There's no time you are supposed to leave them to the society to raise for you. Mm. 
jobs, career, social life, none of these should be a, a stumbling block for you to give, uh, mm. to stop you from giving the proper parenting mm. to your children. Yeah. So for me, it's the same responsibility. Right. Uh, I feel okay, like I feel like here we have. I must say that we have a lot of um, privileges. Mm -hmm. I will say um, over here in the United States, precisely um, because the children back home, they they are raised. Majority of them are raised because while we talk about children in diaspora, right. There are children in Nigeria that are raised from another world. I don't know, it's not in diaspora, it's not in Nigeria, but the parenting styles of their parents might not work. I say might not work because there is no one way of parenting. And your way of parenting is not so far to my parenting. Mm. It all depends on the grace of God mm. and leading us to speak when and what we're supposed to speak to the children mm -hmm. and how to guide them. I just feel like we as parents should lead by example, mm. teach them our values and, um, you know, because while we raise them in diaspora, we are in another man's land. Mm. Their kids are not, they're not lost. Their mm. kids are successful. So it's up to us to teach them our values and, and the, you know, just to maintain our culture over here. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, yeah I sorry to quote you. Uh, mm -hmm. The reason why I ask um, the difference from raising your kids back in Nigeria compared to here, this is a Western life, you know, environment play, it would eat mm -hmm. hard. Yeah. You raise your kids. Uh, that's why I ask that. Yeah. Simple question. Mm -hmm. Is there any, you know, advantage? Yeah, actually, um, if, if, I, if I could borrow from one of my mothers, um, Many, many, she has so many, many, many sayings. Right. Um, it said, the work of a child is one you truly never retired from. Um, you're never at any time going to say, oh, um, I I'm retiring at this point. Right. So to your question specifically, when it comes to raising kids in this, um, uh, in this part of the world, what we found, what a lot of parents found, um, of course, uh, myself in inclusive, right. what, what we found very, maybe a little bit challenging is the fact that um, what the expectation. There is this expectation that the kid has right. uh, because they go to school, uh, they go to their friends' birthday party, uh, they attend events and all of that. They they see how those kids, um, the kids, the things they express to them in class, um, the things they express to them in all of those gatherings, they want to have similar experience back at home. But it's up to us to say, okay, we, we love the fact that uh, your friends are bringing all this to the table. Uh, they go to Las Vegas for holiday. Holiday is not bad. Um, but it doesn't necessarily have to be a ritual. Like So uh, to the extent that their culture um, brings about uh, uh, some sort of, brings about as, you know, all those cultures that were being integrated, as long as those cultures, as much as those cultures help us raise those kids uh, better, they help us, uh, let them lead a very good life. As long as those cultures assist in raising them in the right way, I think we can embrace those cultures. But to the extent that they are very destructive, uh, we can always say no to those cultures and we don't necessarily have to agree with all those cultures. So to a large extent, uh, I would say that is in the area of um, culture. That's where we diverse a little bit. Right. And then that's one thing we have to keep an eye on from time to time. You know, uh, the angle I was coming from where I said... Mm -hmm. To me, right. that the responsibility mm -hmm. is same, whether in Nigeria or in, right. in, in the diaspora. Mm. The difference we have here is that mm. a lot of parents in this part of the world are quick kind of to abandon their responsibility mm. to the environment or to the society. Mm. Right. Because we have work to do, we mm. have career to pursue, we have this and that to do. Mm. We leave our children to uh to wander around if i can use that yeah. word in code yeah, yeah in the nigeria i will tell you why i say that yeah. okay when i came to the us in 2019 i had an experience so then uh i used to when i'm i work night so right. whenever i'm when i was whenever i'm going to work i will take my son a 10 year old boy and my little girl of five 
take them to a friend's place where they will stay for like two hours before their mom arrives from mm. work. So somebody told me now walk. He, okay, the, the lady saw me when I was taking them to that place. Mm. And I said, ah, where are you going? I said, I'm doing this. So when, when we got to work, she said, ah, why are you taking them out that that boy is ten, is old enough to no. stay no, at home, no. take care of the younger sister? I said, no. Do you know what amazed me? This, this person, particular person, was actually living a seven years old boy. Mm. The yeah. boy would come back from school mm. himself, open the door, go inside the house. Yeah. The boy knows how to pick the food, press the number in the microwave, warm the food, yeah. and stay at home till mom comes back from work at 3 a.m. in the morning. Yeah. Oh. I, I, I think that is... You understand? Uh, mm. So, those are the some things that we do. Mm. And you know in this environment, children are looking for a lot of information. Yeah. There are a lot of questions that is going on in their head mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that needs answer. Yeah. So, they are going to be looking for the answer. Yeah. And anywhere they get the answer, whatever answer they get, whether right or wrong, is what they are going to take. Yeah, actually. If you are not lucky, sorry, mm -hmm. if you are not lucky and they get the wrong answer, yeah. you are him for it. Yeah. But if you are lucky, they probably stumble on the right answer. You are also lucky for it. So, my number one on the line thing about parenting is that you have to be available for them. Yeah. Yeah. Even back home, our parents were available for us. Yeah, I think there's there's a lot of danger with that actually. Um I think uh, if an internet raise a charge for you, um, there is every likelihood that internet will destroy that charge. Gotcha. And as a matter of fact, these are these are minds that are not fully grown. Um, so the letting them exposed to those kind of information. Uh, is those ten, those kind of information tends to rob them of their their childhood. Uh, they are exposed to things that they are, their minds are not developed to handle. So those are very very dangerous. So to to your point about you know about our responsibility, our responsibility. I mean, even in this land, is to raise those kids. If we are successful at every other time, we fail in that regard. We are right. a total failure, actually, and we must be very careful what we do. I understand that. what you're saying, mm -hmm. but. I, I disagree with some of your um, okay. your points. Okay. First of all, let me bring up the point of internet. Okay. So internet, when you keep internet, I say I, this is an argument I, or topics mm. I already discussed with friends. Okay. If you keep internet away from kids, mm. they will be curious to know what is there, right? And when they get to school, that internet you refuse to provide at home, mm. the friend the will provide it to them at school. So okay. during lunchtime, they will go and Google whatever they want to Google, okay. and the friends will um, will show them things they feel is cool. But when you have internet at home, it, the system has given us the opportunity to okay. monitor their activities. Yeah. Mm. So you put your pin, you put the security, the child okay. um, code and everything. So mm. you can go back, no mm. matter what they delete, okay. you can go back and view what they are doing. I believe like in parenting, one of the things that I think okay. or I've seen that affects some children, I speak based on a social worker. Okay. I'm okay. a social worker. Right. Okay. So kids tend to go for what is taken away from them. Hmm. When you see a child, a 12-year-old, we are in a world where cell phones is not a big deal. Hmm. And you take it away from them. Trust me, if you provide a cell phone to this child, the first, second, and third day of providing the phone to hmm. them, they will be on their phone all day. Mm. After the third day, guess what? They have seen everything they want to see right. that are appropriate. They keep the phone. You will call that child 100 times a day before they see. They don't even know where their phones are. But if you take the phone away from mm. them, they go to school. All right. They take the phone from their friends and Google what they want, what they don't want, what the, uh, the, the suggestions from their friends they will see all that. So I feel like exposing children and instilling in them the right things to do and letting them know that you trust them, yeah. you test them to make sure that they gain that trust. In parenting, mm -hmm. one key thing is uh, discipline. Yeah. 
I agree. So how do you discipline a child? What do you do when a child is kind of wrong? Right. Mm. You know, if I may quote a scripture, the Bible says, spare the rod mm. and, and spoil the child. child. Mm. You know, I'm not a very difficult person, but at the same time, I'm a very disciplined person. Mm. My kids know there are certain things they cannot do. My wife is even worse than me <laughs> when it comes to that. Yeah. When my wife look at you, yes, okay, just yesterday, I was eating. My son came there, wanted to take part of that food. After I said, Daddy, can I take from me? When the mom look at your wife was there, yeah. when she saw the mom's Faith. face, she dropped what she has. Mm. She I, think, I, think, I think that generally because of <laughs> the culture. Mm. The culture. So the culture you, must, you must instill a discipline. In your, yeah. ch your children cannot be your friend. Obama, uh, Mitchell Obama, granted an interview long, long, long ago. He said that I interviewed that my girls are not my friend. They are my children. Mm. Mm. Friendship is different from being your mm. any. Then you decide to make your children your friend, then you begin to lose it mm. that day. Because your friend, you are now going to begin to give a lot of compromise. Mm. So, yeah. how do you discipline your kids then? Now, you, okay. I mean, if, if discipline. Your kids be your friend, yeah. Right? yeah, they shouldn't be your friend. Well, they shouldn't be your friend in a way that you will not begin to accept what you are not supposed to accept. And being, being, I, mean, being, I hate this statement being that being your friend does not mean you would definitely accept. You know, the wrong stuff. You don't know they what do. a lot of parents are accepting in the name of being in the United States of America. The so next thing they will say is that thing. we are in America. Children at home, as in children in other in Africa. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, I would say they have respect. I'm not saying the kids here do not have respect. The kids here have respect. The children back home have respect in certain ways. For example. When a, when a parent tells the child not to do something or there will be repercussions, mm -hmm. you know, um, parents back home discipline without mercy. Mm -hmm. um, they can go as far as they can go as long as the child remains alive. Mm -hmm. Whereas parents here, mm -hmm. we need to be careful because... Mm -hmm. If we do it the wrong way, so we, we will are, get in, in be, trouble. Yeah. We'll get yeah. in trouble with the law. And when while that hurts you as a parent, it hurts the child, you know. So I feel like while children back home, even though not all of them get whoopings, right, true. right yeah. in this in today world, mm. children over back home can get disciplined and all that, and we get. Free for, you know, we yeah. go for free. But children here, I feel like when we um, advise our children and they see what we do, sometimes we should also give them that opportunity to show us what they got. Sometimes kids here, um, I know mm -hmm. it's something that we as Africans, we frown upon that when we say that we are giving our children um, that leeway. I mean, we are in America, so we need to kind of yeah. abide by the law because certain things we do back home, we cannot dare do it here, but yeah. we'll be in trouble. So I feel like children all over the world, it doesn't matter where they are being raised, they need to be talked to. We need to talk to them mm. and show them, lead them the way, lead them. And and I continue to say this, there is no best way of treat of raising really a child, true. whether in diaspora oh, or back yeah, home. Yeah. It's only God. But we need to, you know, understand the difference. Mm. Back home when we are when we are growing up, what is time out? Time out is for you to go under the sun, kneel down and raise your hand <laughs> until your parents or whoever put you there. And it can be your neighbor. Yeah. That will punish you. Mm -hmm. yes. But here, yes. timeout is yes. going to your room. Yes. Unfortunately for me, timeout is not going to your room. And timeout is not me. And no, timeout, you have to do some chores. Mm. And if, if you are going on timeout mm. for real here in the United States, I am taking all your devices mm. yeah. or taking out anything yeah. that will be fun for you. Yeah. Mm. And then after that, you need to tell me what you did and what you could have done yeah. differently. So back home, right. um, I feel like 
our children back home, they also, the, we, our children, children are children, they all turn out to be successful. Yeah. So, but we need to be my kind of, um, we need to understand how to deal with it diplomatically. My, my, my take on this is this. Um, so there are those virtues that were inculcated into us by our parents. Uh, for instance, even here in America, uh, what you see is you just meet with some white guys. I've met with like nothing less than five white individuals uh, who have told me, oh, I love your people. I love how your kids greet you. You know, those are areas of our uh, uh, of culture, our culture uh, yeah. Yeah. that are very, very important. You know, you see your child, they kneel down and greet you. Uh, the boys uh, go on the floor on, on their belly. So those are things that we need to amplify. Um, it is good that we have a way of life around there. I, I'm not against uh, the way of life here. Um, anybody could do it. As long as, to your point, there's no certain way of raising a child. You can raise your child as long as it, they come out well, right? right? So, but even at that, there are cultural norms that we don't want to lose mm -hmm. value of. We want to see, keep those norms. And I think we, we need to be very, very uh, careful that we don't just let everything go. Like, yeah. oh, that doesn't matter. Uh, no, he doesn't have to, the child doesn't have to yeah. bend down. He doesn't have to, so let's, no, let's be careful what we allow to go here. I mean, so I still want to be able to take my kids back to, uh, to Nigeria one day. Mm -hmm. And then, I don't want them to be a total strange to the culture out there. And then they get there, they can't, they can't even, can't even in any blend. way, they can't blend in um, any way. So we need to be careful. So those are one way we differ from this part of the world. There are a lot of things we can learn as a matter of our inculcate in this part of the world. Um, I love a lot of things about this world, this country. I, I love it. And I, a lot of things, actually. But I'm not going to lose the sight right. of where I'm coming from because those things made me who I am today. Yeah, I kind of like I kind of agree with um, totally what you're saying. Mm -hmm. And I still have some folks that will say, oh, at a certain age, mm -hmm. I must take my kids back to Nigeria to learn or start high school back in Nigeria to learn the culture and come back to the US. Mm -hmm. You know, I remember when I was growing up, um, we have a certain time um, when you return back from school, mm -hmm. you yeah. have to like take your siesta, sleep, read your book. You know, those culture were imparted in us. And up to you know, university days, even when you're at university, your parents still call you, check yeah. up on you. Yeah. You still have the fear that, oh, I need to return back to my hostel. At certain time, you know, compared to here at 18, when you go to the university, you have total freedom. Yes. You know, you can do everything you like. Back in Nigeria, you still have the fear of your parents. Oh, oh, yeah. My daddy has on me. Even yeah. If I'm out in parties and everything, yes. you want to return back home. Oh, yes at early stage, you know, due to the fear imparted in us, mm. you know, I, I mean, to my own stand of point, I feel raising kids back in Nigeria, it's much, much better than raising kids here in America. America. Uh, just to buttress what, what you just said, you know, sometimes ago, I was asking a, a guy, uh, the guy is in college, mm. and I asked him, what could be the reason why you could decide, you we decide tomorrow, that you don't want to stay with your parents again. You know, this boy just finished high school and uh, I was asking that question, something happened to one boy right. sometimes ago that left the house and other stuff. So, okay, and I asked him, why will you leave the house? And he said, the reason why some Nigerian guy decide to leave their parents is high-handedness. Uh, high that at a certain age, they expect some freedom from their parents. So if they are not getting it. So just, to summarize that is that right. in the life of your children, there is a stage for you to teach, right. there's a stage for you to guide. Mm -hmm. And so if you if you put teach after guide, mm -hmm. then you begin to teach where you are not supposed to, yeah. to teach. So yeah. do the right thing at the right time, teach when you are supposed to teach, discipline where you are supposed mm -hmm. to discipline. So when they get to that age where you are supposed to now remove rope from their yeah. neck, right. you will only begin to guide. Yeah. So and to, then everything. Yeah. To to to, to 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 that somewhere. point, um, is we need to have at the back of our mind one thing that we hold all our kids, children, is love. Love is very very important, uh, and that love must be unconditional. Uh, a child could be a tough child. It could be the type that doesn't listen. You must still love them in any case. Uh, but uh, to his point earlier about knowing. 
um, when to intervene. Even when they're in trouble, we must let them uh, be able to express their mind. Uh, they must be able to talk to us. We must be open. So even though we are not friends in the real sense of the word friends, uh, we're still open to receiving them. Even they must be able to come back to us when they get into trouble. Uh, we must encourage that openness. Uh, from time they don't keep anything from me. Um, yeah, because that's the aspect of trust that you hinted earlier. Right. They must be able to trust, trust us you. enough to come back to us and say, oh, I, I, I got into trouble today. Um, I, 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 I emphasize it at home all the time with my kids. I need to know. I'm your best ally. Right. You don't have any better ally. Anybody, anybody and do you know, person. I'm sorry to cut you mm -hmm. Do you know that from my experience, while people always say that kids that are raised in diaspora mm -hmm. have less values than kids raised in back home, back home. more as you mean kids here mm. due to the structure of our parenting here kids here are more trusting to us they can come to us when they're in trouble they can come to us when they want to talk mm. kids in nigeria will hide it like to the like to yeah. the worst level because they don't feel that yeah. because the parents in Nigeria, some of them, not all, are very strict. And yeah. you know, there is a there is um there are differences between being disciplined and being yeah. structured. It's and a fear of repercussion. Yeah. Right. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because um kids back home I found them to be scared. Mm -hmm. As a parent, yes, you your kids are supposed to be scared of you. At the same time, they need to be free to come to, to you come when to they you. have yes. issues. Yes, you must be. You, know, you must yeah. welcome them. And anytime. the good thing about it is, here, our kids are. You know, back home, you can easily say that uh, village. You know, one person the the yeah. Yeah. is the village. Yeah. yeah. Who is the village? I don't even know who my neighbor <laughs> is. Who is the neighbor's protector? Yeah. Me. But back home, I can I can remember as a child, I was supposed to be at a block rosary. It's I, I don't know if you are Catholic. But we go to um, evening sessions to do our rosary sessions and stuff. I was playing with a friend. My my, I saw my mom's friend. That I don't even know how close they are. She whooped me. Hmm. And before I got home, my mom heard about it. And that was a big issue. Over in. here, my neighbor don't even say hi to people. me, yeah. let alone yeah. my kids. So it's a lot of... Um, 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 positives and negatives. So yeah, we too. just have to take make whatever we have and make out make the best out of it. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, so this is not a topic own. we can exhaust <laughs> within a day. Oh no. Yeah. I yeah. think Absolutely. like you right. said, there is no cut out way of parenting. Mm -hmm. It's just the grace of God that yeah, every one right. of so us. So my own has. conclusion, uh, I, I believe parenting is not all about just the mother. It should be a joint effort between yeah. the dad and the mom. And mm -hmm. we shouldn't forget our cultural value mm -hmm. and impart it on them regularly because a lot of our kids here can't even speak our culture. I mean, can't even speak our language, language. Yeah. Yeah. from yeah. home, which is a big deal. Yeah. So to my conclusion is, um, as a loving parent, we should love our kids. Um, we should love, love, um, we should love them, care for them, and listen to them, like you said, mm -hmm. you know, if they have any issues.